Hello, Hillcrest family. I am in my studio and I'm going to be walking you through your virtual art night kit. So let's dig into what you should have in your kit. Um, and if you don't know what we are making, we are making an ice cream sundae, the sculpture. And I've been showing this to kids, um, just kind of show them what we're going to make it. And everyone asks, can I take a bite? But no, it is not edible. So these are the things that you should have in your kit. You will need three packs of the Crayola um, Magic Model. So this will be making um, two scoops of ice cream, the whipped cream if you want it, and the cherry. This is per a kid. You will need, um, your kit will have three little cups. One cup will have sprinkles, obviously not that many. One cup will have your chocolate syrup, which is just glue with brown paint. And then you'll have a little container of Mod Hodge, which will make it shiny when we're all done. Also, the last thing is your plastic cup. It just may look a little different than mine. And um, a green wire. It's gonna be small, so make sure you don't lose that. I'm putting mine in my cup so I don't lose it. All these things are what we're gonna use that are in your kit. Again, if you're trying to make it, um, and this is obviously the YouTube link of the video of directions, and you are missing something, please contact me. Um, I'll make sure that you get it before you want to continue. Things that you need from your own home. Um, markers. Obviously, if you want a cherry, you're gonna need red, um, or you can use a paint pen, any kind of item that will turn it the shade. Crayola washable markers work fine. I've kind of used a variety. Um, I think for the actual cherry to get it really red and not pink, I did mix in a little bit of washable paint. But again, you can use this, you just may have to do it a lot more work. Um, and again, depending on what color you want your ice cream scoops, I did a pink and a green um, it just depends on the colors you have. Let's see, today I think I'm gonna do a purple and maybe a yellow. So we'll see how that works. And it's just kind of figuring it out. If you're not sure what color, um, you know, I found out that the pink, the red turned into pink and this added a lot more paint and a lot more pigment. So you just kind of have to figure it out as I show you what to do. If you don't like the color, then you just need to add a little more to it. So again, you're just gonna have to figure out what colors you want. Um, and I will warn you, if you start one color and you want to switch it, you gotta be very careful. Um, complementary colors, if you mix them, and say I start with an orange or I start with yellow and I wanna make it purple. And if I start switching that, it may turn a gray color or a brown color. So you do wanna make sure you know what color you are gonna do because you can't quite mix them. Now, if you stick with your cool colors or your warm, um, for example, if I start with a yellow, pink, an orange, or red, and I want to change it, these colors will not mix into a muddy color. They will still stay in this kind of range of colors. Um, the same with the blue, greens, and purples. If you start with one of these and you change it to one of these, it won't change a muddy color. So try to stick with your warm and cool um, if you decide to change colors in the middle of mixing, not a warm with a cool, because again, it will change to a muddy, which is brown, so maybe you want chocolate ice cream. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna switch to my view of my hands, and then we're gonna get started. Can't wait to see your finished products. Okay, so another thing I do wanna mention, I'm working on a very um, messy tabletop that I have in my studio. So when you are mixing with your colors, you may wanna have some kind of plastic tablecloth. Um, I'm gonna have to be careful of mine, because it does have some dirt on it. You don't wanna mix any kind of dirt into your um, magic model. So make sure that you wipe your area down to make sure there's no dust or dirt before you begin mixing your colors. Area is clean. I'm going to take my first package and we're going to open it. And you notice it's white, so we're gonna take it and we kind of just wanna knead it. Um, just kind of squish it between your hands. Try to get it softened up. This is gonna be one ice cream scoop. So we wanna stick with one color on here. So once you kind of squish it in there and get it nice and soft, I'm gonna kind of smush it flat, pick my color 
whatever you choose to use and you're just going to color it. And once you add one layer, we don't want to put our hand right there because it'll get paint over your hand. You're going to close it up and smush. Smush it. Okay, so you just kind of squish it against the table and eventually, and then you do it again like we did. Flatten it out, take your color, color. And if you're using food coloring, yeah, obviously don't drip too many drips on um, it. It'll be too wet. And again, you're just squishing, folding, pushing against your table to get the color to distribute through your magic model. And again, depending on the time, it will depend on how dark or light you want your ice cream to be. More of a pastel color, which is a light color. And if I notice it's not working, sometimes I then just take a different type of marker. This is just a regular washable marker. Again, fold it up and knead it through. Okay, so I feel pretty um, happy with what color I got. Um, it's not so much purple, but I, you'll you'll notice your hands get tend to get a little tired with the markers because you do have to do a lot of work. So that is one color. So we're going to repeat this process with the second color. Now, understand you can continue to use the purple or whatever color you chose. Please understand you don't have to use purple um, for your second scoop of ice cream, or you can change it up by putting a different scoop. So same thing. We're going to put that off to the side. I'm going to open it up and do the same process with your second scoop using the same or different color. I'm gonna show you what to do if you're using paint. So same thing, I've kneaded it so it's nice and soft. Gonna open it up kind of like a little pizza. This is just a temper paint. I've just got a brush and again, this is gonna be more messy than the last so, but it will make your color more vibrant. But my hands and the table are going to get much messier. And then I'm just going to keep doing the process with the paint, just like the marker. As you can see, the paint made it much more intense very quickly. Um, I think I did it three times where the marker, I think I had applied at least four or five. So that is your choice. Again, food coloring is another option. Um, it would probably work even better. So once we've got our two ice cream scoops. We're going to get to our cup. So we want to roll these into a ball as best as possible. You want to use your palm. You want to get it between your palms. Even using the table to um, make it smooth helps. Again, we're not going for it being perfect, but the smoother it looks more real. And the Decide which color you want on the top or the bottom. Okay, those are pretty good. The green, and you just wanna take it and slightly push it. And you're gonna take it, now be careful because once you stick it down, it's hard to remove it it tends to stick with each other. So you kind of want to make sure that you have it where you want it. And then again, you're going to press down on those two. Don't push it too much flat. And then this is when our chocolate syrup comes um, in handy. So again, this is just paint 
I've mixed with your glue. And again, it's in a little one ounce um, container. Mine is just in here. This is how we're going to glue it to this cup. So the, the point, the goal is to make it look like it's running down is to pour it directly in the middle of your top one and it's going to just kind of ooze over the edge. And you just want to pour it all in one place. And then you can take this and move it. This is going to glue it to your um, cup. This is how it's gonna stuck, because it'll. if you saw this one, it pulled down there. So as soon as you get all your chocolate syrup, then you have to get your sprinkles right after that. And you're going to sprinkle your sprinkles on top. And then we're just gonna let that sit um, and just kind of dry. If you would like to, you have two choices. You can, you have enough um, magic model to make your whipped cream and your cherry, or maybe you just want to make the cherry. So while this is drying, we're going to open up our last container and we're going to split it, not in half because your cherry is not going to be that big. So Not that much for your cherry. Now this is where I've got to stop for a second. Um, I have that green paint on my hands, so I'm gonna go wash my hands to make sure none of the green gets off on here because your Cool Whip, or your whipped cream is going to be white, so we wanna keep this white. Okay, now that my hands are clean, we are going to create the Cool Whip if you would like to do this part. So again, um, I'm not gonna use all of it. I'm still gonna pinch some of it off. You want to make a snake. So if you've ever played with Play-Doh, you wanna roll it between your palms. And then once you get it big enough, you're gonna start rolling it on your table. And once it starts getting long enough where your one hand, I, and I, if you notice, watch my hand, I go left, and as I roll it, I move my hand to the right. This is gonna help us keep the same thickness because if you've ever rolled it, sometimes your snake gets really thin in the middle and it breaks. So if you take your hand and as you roll it, you move it, but back and forth, it's going to help. I'm going to start on this end because this end's thicker. But rolling a, a good snake the same size throughout it is just practice. So you may have to get some help. And once it gets long enough, I'm going to just use both hands. And again, you can see my fingers are opening and closing just to keep it the same thickness. Okay. That's good. Now, there is a technique for this coil. And I'm gonna tell you, Miss Lawson had to do it at least two times to get it how it looks on here from thicker, you know, to build it up. So I believe, I'm gonna say this, I start on the inside coil, which is underneath the cherry, and then I work my way fatter. So you're gonna take one end and you're just going to curve it. And then notice as I coil, I want it to be going wider and again it sticks pretty easily so if you have to start over it, it it'll still work you kind of you want it to be a cone and you can see my table was a little dirty so it's like a little hat now again I want it to be I don't want this to be completely dry so if you're doing your cool whip you're obviously going to sit that right on top gently push and then we're gonna make our cherry and if you're skipping the cool whip you would just take the cherry and just stick it on top of the glue so I brought my red paint because I realized the paint made it a deeper color much faster than markers but again use what you have so we're doing the same technique painting it folding it and working it into the clay and this is a smaller piece so it won't take as long but you may just end up with a pink cherry if you just can't find that deeper color
And once you have it the right color, um, then you're just going to roll it into a ball. And you kind of have to, may have to pinch a piece off um, how big or small you want it, depending on your ice cream. And then again, just like I showed you, you're going to take it right on top of your Cool Whip. And you're just going to press it down very gently. Again, this is on top of your ice cream. And then that's when you get your green little stick and just gently bend it to a curve and you're going to stick it right inside your cherry for the stem and again this goes right on top of your ice cream now for the Mod Podge now we do not want to add the Mod Podge right away um, this has to dry completely and when it does it is like stuck in there I mean it's it's there this one has been um, a couple weeks I get made this one just for an example but it has to dry completely so I would say within after two days of it drying then you can take your Mod Podge which is in your little container um, in a paintbrush and just paint it on it or you could just squirt it or you know drip it on there to help seal it and make it shiny but again I would wait at least two days before you add this Mod Podge on top it does give it a shiny look and um, seals in any of the things that may um, move off of your ice cream sundae. So this is your pretty cool ice cream sundae. I hope you enjoyed making it with Miss Lawson. All right, Hawk family, I'm so glad you joined me in my studio creating the ice cream sundae sculpture. Again, I would say wait at least two days before you add the Mod Podge on top just to make sure everything's hardened um, and it stays still. Anytime before that, I would be nervous about adding more wet to it. So I cannot wait to see photos of your ice cream sculpture. So please take a picture, post it on Dojo um, and send it to me. Post it on our tag at HES Art Room. That is our Facebook. The Instagram is at HES underscore art underscore room. So I'll be adding these um, onto our so you link so you can see the links. So I cannot wait to see your ice cream sundaes. And I'm so glad that we got to enjoy a little time together. If you were sitting in your PJs, me, I was not. But I really enjoyed getting to create something at home with you at home. And I cannot wait to see your ice cream sculptures. All right, Hawks, I will see you later.